But what scared me, Matt, um, is that mm. Michelle Bullock... Now, she's the woman the government's just appointed as a new Reserve Bank governor. It, what she's saying about this, she last night gave her first big speech after being appointed, and after I thought, no wonder they appointed her. Uh, she is still backing this green push, even while admitting it's going to cost us and could probably leave us without enough electricity. Here she is. Coal-fired power plants are scheduled to be shut down over the next three decades. Now, this could put upward pressure on energy prices if coal plant closures are not matched by renewables supply and storage. And there is much uncertainty here. And in fact, she says we're getting only one third of the investment in green energy that we actually do need anyway if you're going to replace all these coal-fired power stations. How can a Reserve Bank governor go along with this dangerous gamble when you already see the wheels falling off the machine and flying all over the road? Well, I think there's the, the one thing that I did take away from Michelle Bullock's speech is that uh, climate change is the, the greatest excuse uh, for our, ma our major policymakers since they were in school. It's the dog ate my homework uh, for them now that where, you know, they lose control of inflation, they cost us all uh, thousands of dollars more on our mortgage because of their mismanagement of monetary policy. It's not their fault, Andrew, it's climate change. <laughs> climate change did this Correct. to us uh, uh, instead. And she's also, she's, I think she's revealed a bit too much here, Andrew, because she's effectively said that shutting down our coal-fired power stations, I mean, to give her a juice, she said there's a risk, there's uncertainty here, that power prices will go up. Well, that's not what Chris Bowen's saying. That's not what the government's saying. The government's saying that we'll end up with cheaper power by shutting down our coal-fired power stations because, as they say, I think it's a trademark term now, renewable energy is the cheapest form of power. They say it over and over and over. Well, clearly the Governor of the Reserve Bank doesn't share that view, or is at least not as confident as Mr Bowen in that view. Uh, and so I give her credit for at least that, for at least opening up this, this window a little bit into what is actually happening here, because I know a lot of people are very worried about our energy system. They're very worried about whether or not we'll be able to keep the lights on over the next few decades. Uh, that will mean, of course, higher prices for all of us, higher than we already ha have now today. And it also risks uh, the strength of our manufacturing industry and our ability to defend ourselves. It is just totally absurd. China is building two coal-fired power stations a week. They're now using our coal again to fuel those power stations. Why don't we just build a couple of those, get it done, so we can at least not have these risks hanging over us, like Michelle Bullock says? Yeah, but what also stuns me, um, Matt, is that this incoming Reserve Bank governor seems, despite what you say, you know, she said, oh, she does acknowledge the risk, but she also seems keen to exaggerate and totally misrepresent the science yeah. to actually scare people about global warming risks. Have a listen to this. New technologies are also likely to emerge that could reduce costs and increase efficiencies. No, that wasn't the one. She actually went on to say... We're I going know, to have just, yeah. more frequent <laughs> cyclones. And that's when our yeah, own uh, Bureau yeah. of Meteorology is quite clear we are getting fewer cyclones and fewer, fewer. bad cyclones. Yeah. Why would she be saying the opposite? Well, well not only that, the IPCC, the, 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 the Moses here of the climate movement, it tells us that there's no trend in, in cyclones. That, that's clear from the report. So obviously Michelle Bullock hasn't read those reports, but she's coming to these major conclusions potentially affecting your interest rates and your uh, home loan bills uh, on the back of it. It's very concerning that she's not across the detail here because it's simply not true. There is no evidence that cyclones are becoming more frequent over the past few years and, and, and very little evidence then, of course, that they're necessarily going to become more expensive in the future. I think she went on to say, too, the reports I've read, is she went on to say that house prices could fall in areas of the country which are exposed to these climate change risks. Well, again, if that were the case, Michelle, why aren't we seeing those price reductions now? Because, I mean, you might think you're omniscient and, and know, all, know it all, but I reckon the people buying the properties in, in harbourside areas, and I notice that a lot of the people so alarmed about climate change themselves, themselves seem to like waterfront property uh, and, and are willing to pay millions and millions of dollars for it. If they really did believe what they say, why are they buying houses near where the sea levels are just going to inundate those things within decades? doesn't really add up, does it? And what's so important, actually, about that graphic about fewer cyclones with global warming is that as soon as you acknowledge that truth, you're actually saying, look, maybe some parts of global warming are good. Right. Fewer cyclones are good. But, you know, to actually say, no, it's the exact opposite, that is really freaking me out. I mean, data doesn't matter to a Reserve Bank governor. That is scary. Matt Canavan, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.